Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're gonna look at how we work with some of the adjustment layers to create some depth in a collage image as we've created here. So we're really gonna be looking at these towers on the right-hand side, how we can modify the saturation, also the contrast to give this nice level of depth. We'll also look at how we can pop a couple of textures in there as well. So we're gonna start with a brand new document here. We'll jump to that. So we're gonna drag a couple of images in here. We're gonna create some transparency using the layer mask tools and then look at how we can use those levels adjustment layers and the hue saturation to create a little bit of color difference and depth between those layers. So we'll come to a couple of images here. We're gonna use the move tool. We can just click and hold on that, drag it up to our tab, drop it in the middle. And then we'll come to a couple of other images in here too. We'll just grab a couple of these different tower images. And so now once we've got all these images into our new canvas, we're just gonna right click on each of them and turn them into a smart object. And that's just gonna mean that when we rescale them all, it's gonna basically keep the quality of the original image that we've got in that layer. So we can just right click on all of these, convert them to smart objects, and then we'll work from the bottom layer up to just make some transparency here. So if I go to edit and free transform, we're just gonna transform this down. If you're using older versions of Photoshop, you may need to hold down shift as you rescale it to keep the proportions, but here we don't need to do that. We'll rescale it and hit enter. And then we're gonna do a very quick creation of the transparency. We'll just use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm really just gonna run around the edge of this tower very quickly. I'm not gonna worry about the detail of it because we can always come back in and modify the edges. That's the nice thing about using the layer mask is that we can always kind of modify and change the mask that we've created. So just clicking dot to dot around there with the polygon lasso tool, we'll hit the layer mask button down at the bottom right here, which is gonna create our transparency. And then we'll just work our way up through all of these images. I'm just using the shortcut V to tap to the move tool to bring this back to the middle. And we'll also transform this one down, so again, Command and T, just scale it down. And again, we're just gonna grab the polygonal lasso tool. We'll zoom in a bit here. So Command or Control plus, and we'll just quickly come around this tower, really kind of catching the main edges of it. And we can always come back in and fix some of these edges once we're happy with our composition. But generally I'll try and really create a rough design first, and then begin to work on that and improve it as I go along, we'll just grab the tower like this, hit the add layer mask tool down at the bottom right here, and that will create our transparency there. I'm gonna move this one behind our other tower, and then just using the, the move tool, I can pop it over to the left here. Then we'll grab this next layer up, do the same thing. Again, polygon lasso tool, just quickly dot to dot around the edges here. I'm not gonna worry about the, the kind of detail at the edge of this tower, we're just gonna come straight down, and again, we can always come and fix this up a little bit later if we decide that we need to. Add a layer mask there, and then come to the topmost image. Again, Command and T, or Control and T on the PC. We'll need to zoom out of this one. This image is a bit higher resolution. And we'll just get this to fit in, hit Enter, and then we'll just zoom in again. I'm holding on the space bar to, to move around here. Again, using the polygonal lasso tool, we'll just quickly come around here, not worrying too much about the detail of the edges. Okay, so now we can again click the layer mask on there and then we can zoom out a little bit. And what we'll do is begin to kind of position these. So I'm gonna pop this tower over on the right-hand side here. We'll then grab this one so I'm just holding down Command to jump between my layers as I move them around. I'm gonna to go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. We'll, again, move this up over here, and then we'll grab this tower, and I'll move this one, and actually I'm just gonna rotate it just a little bit out. We're gonna do a bit of a disjointed perspective in here, so we'll transform this one down a little bit and just have it popping out on this side here. So with these kind of four images here, we've got them all in different layers. Our topmost layer is this 
image in the foreground. This is our next layer down. I'm actually going to move this behind this other bigger building. And then we've got these two buildings behind. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just add a levels layer above each of these images. So if I go to my adjustment layers, I can add a levels adjustment layer. And what this really allows me to do is to control the amount of contrast in this image. So I can basically remove some of the shadow there and also remove some of the white areas of that image. That's also affecting the, the white background here as well. So I'm going to right click on my layer in this gray area on the right hand side and we're going to create a clipping mask. And that's going to attach that levels adjustment layer just to that layer. So now I can hold down the option key, drag this up and you can see now it's affecting this across on the right. I can either add a bit more shadow in there and then I can right click on it, create a clipping mask and then we'll come to the next layer up. I'm going to drag another adjustment layer there. We'll right click, create that clipping mask and so basically each of these adjustments is really just affecting the one layer that it's above. You can see this little hooked arrow pointing to the layer below it. So just to kind of fix this up a little bit, I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool and we're going to do a square edged rectangle. Just take that roundedness off it and we'll draw this out. And actually what I'll do now is change the color so that it sort of matches the, the gray down here. So we're just choosing a gray color. We'll move this layer down a little bit and I'm going to move this to the top and then this tower layer we'll just let it sit out there I'm actually going to transform this and just distort it a little bit so that tower is able to pop out a little bit more so I just wanted to move away from the distraction at the bottom of that layer there so now we've got some depth in there with a different kind of layers we can accentuate that even more so this background layer maybe we want even less color in there, we could brighten it up and basically take some of that color out of it as well. And that's where we can use the hue saturation adjustment layer as well. So if we select hue saturation, we can take some of the color out of that background image, we can lighten it even more. But actually what I'm enjoying working with here when I'm doing these types of compositions is using the colorize option, which is actually going to allow me to add a little bit of a different color into each of these layers, which is just gonna allow me to control and distinguish between each of these tower layers. So we've got our hue saturation adjustment layer there. I'm gonna create a clipping mask for that layer. And then we'll pull this up above our other layer. And we'll turn on the clipping mask here as well. And then you can see when we move this color, then we're changing it from the other colors that we've got there. We can add a bit more saturation in there and we get this nice distinguished kind of difference between each of those layers. So we can keep going. We'll hold down the option key and drag this up again. We're gonna right click, create clipping mask. And then again for this layer, we'll just choose a slightly different color. So we get this nice difference between each of the, the towers that are kind of popping out there. Now, one thing we can also do between these towers if I add a layer above my hue saturation layer down here at the bottom, I'm just going to add one new layer. I'm going to grab my brush tool from across on the left in my toolbar. And we're just going to create a nice large size brush here. I'm just using the right square bracket to increase the size. I can right click, make sure that my hardness is right down. And I'm also just undo that, Command Z. And I'm also going to lower the opacity. Now I can lower the opacity up here in the options toolbar, but I can also, with the brush tool selected, type any number. So from one to 10, and you can see my opacity changing there from 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, just by typing the numbers one, two, three, or four. We'll go with 40%. And then if we click in here, we can begin to add some shadow behind some of those objects. So you can see it's adding behind this tower on the right. If I create a new layer below this topmost tower layer. I'm going to create a new layer. Click down here at the bottom. We'll drag this down so it's below that layer. Now I can add some shadow between those different layers. That's going to help those layers to kind of pop out from one another and give this composition a bit more depth. We'll do another one between these other two towers. 
So I'm going to create a new layer and then I'll just drag it down below this tower on the left. And again, we can add in some shadow there that's going to help those layers pop out from one another. Now, one other thing you might want to do as you're kind of playing around trying to build some depth into your composition is actually add a bit of texture in there as well. So I'm going to grab a photograph that I've taken here. And basically, we'll move back to the Move tool. I'm going to drag this to my composition, drop it in here. We've got this kind of large image with this kind of nice texture in it. I'm going to hold down Command T. We'll transform this down. I'll just zoom out so we can see the edges there. And basically, I'm looking for this texture in the middle. We hit Enter. We can now use this to kind of add a bit of texture into parts of our images. So I'm actually going to desaturate this before I use it in my image. So I'm going to come to my adjustment layers. We'll add a hue saturation adjustment layer. And for this, we're going to drag the saturation right down. And then I'm going to select both these layers. And then either by right clicking and going to merge layers or by using the shortcut Control or Command and E, it will merge those layers. You can see I end up just with this black and white layer. So let's merge the adjustment layer into that layer. So now I can drag this down. Before I do that, I'm just going to double click on properties up here and color. It's just going to reveal a bit more of my layers panel. And now I can drag down this hue saturation layer. We'll drag it to just above that bottom most tower on the left here. I'm going to move this across and I'm going to right click, create a clipping mask. You can see it goes into that tower. And then we'll just play with these darken or multiply or screen options and you can see it's adding some nice texture into those towers behind so I'm going to use overlay here and then we can zoom in again a bit and you can see it's just adding a nice little bit of texture in there and we can drop down the opacity of that layer to have more or less texture in there so any texture where you've got this kind of grungy or rusty look will work quite nicely for this type of effect and I can Hold down the Option key, drag this up. It's going to add that texture across on the right-hand side. I can right-click and create a clipping mask so that just kind of focuses it in on that building. And then we'll do the same again, moving up to add it above this building. I'll right-click again, create a clipping mask, and you can see it's just adding that little bit of texture. We can move it around if we want to to kind of find the best spot for that texture on each of these layers. So we can kind of find what works well, what's gonna give a nice little bit of contrast to those. And then by kind of building up and modifying these layers, we can build this nice kind of level of contrast between all those different layers. So just kind of breaking this down, what we have is our images with transparency. I can just hold down the Option key and go through all my layers. So holding down Option and clicking on the eyeball there will turn off all the other layers. So basically we're layering up our levels adjustment layer our hue and saturation, and then this textured layer. And then this shadow here is actually sitting on top of this building. And then if we go up a little bit more, we can see we've got our other layers. We can gradually turn them on just to see what we've done. Again, some more texture on that particular building, building up and then into these other layers with these other kind of shadows added behind some of the buildings. We've got this nice texture building up as we kind of go up and through each of our layers. So hopefully this is useful when you're thinking about adding this texture and contrast between different layers. We can also do something about this bottom rectangle that we've got. So at the moment, this is just really kind of obscuring everything. I think I prefer to have that as a, an ellipse. So I'm actually gonna change this to ellipse. We'll change the fill to that gray. And now we can, it will drag right from the top. I want to get something that's going to go from corner to corner. I'll hold down shift so it's a perfect circle. And then we can kind of bring this down here. We'll transform this a little bit more so that it touches those edges. I'm going to hit enter. And actually, I'm just going to go to image canvas size. And I'm just going to increase my canvas at the bottom there. So I'll make this 50 inches. And that's just going to add a little bit more space at the bottom there. So we get that whole circle in and so now you can see we've got this layer in there i'm going to drop the opacity of this first and then i'm going to grab my polygonal lasso tool i'm just going to make a layer mask for this so we've got a little bit of space to kind of blend 
this circle with the rest of our layers above. So with a shape as well, we can add a layer mask. It's gonna cut this off here. And then we can cover a couple of little steps here. I'm gonna turn the opacity back up here so we get that solid color. And then on my layer mask here, I'm just gonna grab the brush tool, make it a little bit smaller. And this is set to the black brush. And I'm gonna set this to 100%. And I'm just gonna draw along this edge and it's just going to blend that in nicely there i can kind of blend this up too and we can just kind of get that to add to the bottom of this image here nicely so it blends up now if i hit this circle on the layers panel and hold down command as i do that you can see it actually gives me a circle here and what i'm going to do so I'm just going to go to this layer below, to the mask of that layer. I'm going to grab my brush tool. This time we'll drop down the size of the brush. And I'm going to invert this uh, selection. So Shift, Command, and I is going to invert my selection. And basically, so it's selecting this area outside that. I'm going to flip to the black color. And now make sure I select the right layer here. So it's actually this layer below. I can basically fix that mask so that it is now matching that circle. So we'll come across the other side, that one looks pretty good. And then we'll do Command D to deselect that. I can again use this textured layer above that layer. We'll move it here. And I'm gonna turn that into a clipping mask. And we'll turn down the intensity of that bit. So you can see now we're starting to build up this kind of nice focused shape that focuses in on these buildings, the differentiation between those layers, and then also this kind of nice texture in the bottom here. Now we could also, I'm just gonna turn off this layer, use something like a, a brush layer at the bottom here. So if you've made any custom brushes or anything like that, so then you can jump in here and use a custom brush. I've got my custom brush saved down here. So now I can, basically paint on this layer. I'm just gonna decrease the opacity of that and we'll just paint across this. And I'm gonna modify my brush here a little bit. I'm gonna increase the scattering. Okay, I'm just gonna paint across this, add that little bit of texture in there with my, my custom brush, right click, create a clipping mask, and then you can see we can get that nice texture of the brush in there. We can use things like darken or even something like overlay or soft light to blend that texture in there. So we can use a textured layer, or if we're looking to think about how we can kind of incorporate brushes into our design, then we could use a textured brush uh, in there as well to actually blend with that. So you can see we get this nice buildup of different layers of texture within this design. So hopefully this is a useful overview of how we can kind of start to build some contrast between these different layers in Adobe Photoshop. This will be a nice final touch if you're developing this kind of image to, to actually blend those together. If you have any questions about this, then do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.